Finding softwares that can compete with Adobe's Creative Cloud softwares can be tough, especially if you're looking for something that's completely free. Now, there are already some alternatives that are out there that are free, and I will be making a video going through every Adobe Creative Cloud's free alternative, but there is a brand new one that just came out in the last few days, and it's made by Nikon. So this is the Nikon NX Studio. It's made by Nikon, and it's made just for Nikon images. That may change later on, but I don't think that they would end up making it completely open. I think it's meant for just its own user base. So Nikon NX Studio is made to combat uh, Lightroom and all of its other alternatives. It's not too bad. It is just in the brand new opening phase, so there might be some new updates coming up soon. It's only in version 1.0, which means it's super fresh, and it just came out, I think, two days before this video is being recorded. So there is still a little bit to be desired, but I think if Nikon's smart, they'll be updating it with um, some new patches. I've played around on it a little bit and I've used some of my friends Nikon images that they sent to me and overall I've had a pretty good experience with it. I've tried to be open-minded with the fact that it is still brand new and there should be some new updates coming up later on with some improvements to make it better. So with that said I've enjoyed using it so far and I thought I would share it off with you guys uh, to let you know what it's all about. So to start off this is what it looks like. The UI doesn't look all that new and current or modern. Uh, it looks like something you might find out of the mid 2000s, but it doesn't look like it's from 2021, which it is. Now this may be because Nikon feels like its main user base are fairly old and they're more accustomed to older looking software, or they just didn't want to spend a whole lot of time making it super fresh and modern looking. They may end up updating it later on, but their main priority might have been just to make something functional and not really care too much about the UI at the time. So the UI is one of my biggest issues with it. I, I would give it maybe a five out of 10, maybe six out of 10 if I'm feeling nice today. But I think if they're going to really try and push this to a big user base, I think that's one thing that's going to have to be improved. Next up, the software isn't all that responsive. There's this weird thing in Windows, at least, if you try and move the window around, it's really laggy. If I move my mouse as I would with any normal software, every other software moves the mouse and it works normally. But moving the Nikon NX Studio window around is really laggy and I don't really know what's going on with that. So that seems to be one other issue. And it seems to take quite a while for the sliders to actually adjust the image. Sometimes you might have to wait two to five seconds just for the image to update what you're working on with the sliders. So in Lightroom, it's nice because the image for the most part adjusts in real time as you're moving the slider up and down. In Nikon NX Studio, you have to wait to see the image while you're changing the slider. So you can't really just move the slider and see it updating linearly, you have to click on the slider, wait for it, and then adjust from there. With the sliders as well, there's also no double click to reset. There's this tiny little arrow in the center at zero where you can click on that and then the slider will zero back. But this tiny, tiny little arrow is tiny and it's hard to get your mouse onto. And I think that's fairly consistent with the whole application. Uh, a lot of the icons are fairly small and it seems fairly unforgiving if you click just a little bit off of those icons. Maybe it's because I'm using my monitor in 4K and not any sort of scaling. It's at just 100%. So there may be some weirdness because of that. So it might be an issue with me because I'm using a, a 4K monitor to do my edits with that instead. That's another thing I think that they'll be having to adjust later on is the snappiness of the software. Uh, it definitely feels fairly laggy. And I have an AMD 3900X, which is by no means a slow CPU in my computer as well. So I would hazard to say that it is definitely the software's issue that makes it slow. But apart from those two issues, I think the rest of the software looks and feels fairly good. There's plenty of different options to use on the right-hand panel to edit your image. It's not overly different from Lightroom. 
though it is missing a few features from Lightroom, but it also has a few different features that Lightroom doesn't have. So to start off, there's no multiple modules like Lightroom has. Uh, it's basically just all in one window, and this is what you see pretty much all the time. There are some of these other icons on the top right, like edit video, other apps, slideshow, print, upload, and export. But those are just buttons that will open up a different window. It doesn't change the UI as a whole. So once you import all your photos, this is what it looks like on the main panel. Then we come over to the right hand panel. This is where all the work will be done. So starting off from the top, we have the histogram, as I mentioned before, you can change this between RGB or just single colors and white as well. Underneath that, we have three tabs. We have adjustments, info and XMP or metadata. You can add your own metadata in this panel, whether that's the name of the person who created it or some other information that you want to add as well. Next, we have info, which is more unchangeable based on the photo that you took and the model of the, the camera that you shot with. Then we have adjustments, which is basically why I think most people will be getting this software. There's a lot in here that looks similar to Lightroom. We have the color control point, which is actually really cool. I would compare this similar to how Lightroom has those little buttons on the tone curve and the HSL sliders where you can select a specific point on the image and change those values based on the luminance and saturation of that one point. This basically selects a specific point and you can change up the settings on that one location. One thing I like about Nikon NX Studio is the fact that the right hand panel can be expanded way wider than Lightroom can. So you can have a little bit more finer control on these sliders, which is pretty nice when you're doing some fine editing. So once we have these photos finalized and edited, I think they look pretty good considering I just started learning how to use the software. We can go up and go to the top right and go to upload. It's kind of weird because it only gives you options to upload to the Nikon website or to YouTube. I don't know why they would let photos be uploaded to YouTube to begin with. Obviously you can't, but it's a weird addition to have regardless. Then we have exporting. This is what the export dialog window looks like. It's pretty standard and easy to use. A little bit less convoluted than Lightroom's export dialog. And that's about it. So that is the Nikon NX Studio. I don't shoot with Nikon, so I don't see myself using this anytime soon. I may still play around with it a little bit more with my friend's Nikon images, but if you shoot Nikon and you're looking for a free editor, uh, I would suggest trying this out. Keep in mind that you should be open-minded when you're using this. Just because of how new it is, there's going to be some bugs. There's going to be some frustrations with how it runs, but let's hope that Nikon uh, knows about this and will be updating it coming up soon. If not, Nikon, if you're watching this, I think you still have some work to do to make it a little bit better. Overall, I think Nikon NX Studio is a pretty good alternative for Lightroom, especially considering it is completely free. Uh, there's no subscription, there's no upfront cost. The only cost that you need to use it is buying a Nikon camera. So if you have a Nikon camera, congratulations, you are eligible to use Nikon NX Studio. Or if you have Nikon images, that works too. But for now, I'm going to be going back to Lightroom because I use Sony. Lightroom works with Sony, and I already have my Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. So in the meantime, let me know what you think of the Nikon NX Studio in the comments. Uh, are you gonna be using it? Are you gonna ditch Lightroom for this software? And what other improvements do you see? Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.